Hi, I'm Chris from Red Windows, and hey, you can do this if that is you want to, because this is Air Windows Wolfbot. So, having just done a fancy meter thing and so on, and been real busy dealing with trying to explain how that works, I might as well follow it up with some real uh, dark magic, crazy, bizarre experiment side stuff. Here's Wolfbot. It is not a very big plugin, as you can see. And you can also see that it doesn't have any controls to it. And that's because this experiment is about trying to take two Kalman filters, not regular filters, Kalman filters, and use those to act like the classic molybdenum transformer uh, Wolfbox DI. And I gotta say, uh, it didn't work, but it does something interesting anyhow, and I might even be able to find use for it. So here's what we got. Here is Wolfbot. And if we play audio, like this Alien Kittens track that I've got here, and then turn it on, what you're hearing is the Kalman filters going nonlinear and weird in two separate ways. It's reducing a lot of the highs, and it's taking away a little bit of the lows as well. The idea is to make it tighten up the lows in a useful way, and then also take off a lot of the high end. But since it's not actually a filter, we're getting some weird results. And I can show that to you also by playing a guitar through it. So here is the dry signal. And here that is with Wolfbot included. Now, that clearly rounded out some of the edges. One of the things about the Wolfbox transformer when used as a DI is that it softens stuff in this really musically useful way. I don't think the common filters are quite getting there. For further evidence that the common filters are not quite getting there, but to show you what it actually does, here is a bass. And this is a Rickenbacker. And this is what the bridge pickup sounds like. It's a little bit fret buzzy. There's a little grind to it. But that's nothing to what you hear when you turn on a Wolfbot like this. Next thing you know, you have this kind of grunge and buzz on top of the bass, but it is also coloring and shaping the inside of the sound, the, uh, the low frequency head. And here we've got some frequency noises. Again, I can turn it off. When I turn it off, it's a very clean sound, but we've got these high frequency bits in there. So if you wanted to take those away in a way where it sits in the mix and acts like a bass, well, you could put it through an amp. But, you can also do this. And there you have Wolfbot doing what it's supposed to do. But you can also hear, here what I'll do is I will switch over to the bass pickup. Here's where you start to hear Wolfbot getting in the way. Because what we've got here, if I shut this off and we hear what that pickup sounded like all by itself, it will go clean. 
that's a clean DI sound. Now maybe we don't want the highs on there, so you could, you know, filter them. But you don't necessarily want it to sound like it has extra fret buzz, or it's going through some small amplifier with like a shoe sitting on top of it and vibrating. But when you turn on Wolfbot, immediately we have a uh, dark mojo and ugliness happening. But that is associated with the sound of the bass, and that's an upper mid-range buzz, meaning that that's going to make it easier to hear, even if it's maybe not a desirable sound. So that's where the experiments have gone regarding Wolfbot. Like this one's done. It's a featureless plugin. Looks just like this. And that's all it does. There is no distortion in it. It doesn't actually do that much for the dynamics of the signal. It won't cut them out. And for that, let's demonstrate that. Here is, let me, I'm switching out some things. Drums. So if I turn on Wolfbot, it's different. Not only that, you don't have anything else other than pairs of the Kalman filter that I made that will do this for you. Turn it back out, and we have the highs. Turn it back in. And we've got sort of that 60s, 70s, boxy kind of thing going on. Because what it's doing is it's taking out the extremest of extreme lows, and it's taking out a whole bunch of highs. But it's doing it using the Kalman filter, and the Kalman filter is not the way we usually understand filters. It's actually quite tricky to work with. When I work with it in something like Stonefire, it's not designed to be like a brick wall. This is using it as two brick walls, one for the lows and one for the highs. So we get a giant mess. No wolf butt. And you turn it on, and it's doing this. Now it's not as easy to hear what's happening on drums, but I can switch right back over to the track Alien Kittens that I've often used to demonstrate stuff with. Here's clean, and here's our open. And you can pretty clearly hear how it's buzzing all over the place. Because, again, this is sort of weird air wind disease stuff that other people haven't done. And common filters aren't really meant for audio, so you get this. There's a kind of a buzz on there. Or a lot of a buzz on there. Really. If we were to go back to a guitar... Well, you could use that as kind of a percussive sound, a DI kind of sound, that will not poke out on the super lows and highs the way that it otherwise would if you just turn it off and it's too clean. You put it back on, and you've got a distorty kind of sound going on. Or we can go back to the bass. Again, if you're expecting this to play cleanly, it's not going to do that for you. But I might find use for this if I have a DI bass of some kind, and I'm looking for that sort of Motown-ish, drive the sound with the DI instrument in such a way that it doesn't poke out in the highs and lows, and sits in a pocket, but still has a percussive drive to it. And that's really the idea. So, that's Wolfbutt. Uh, I don't know whether it's going to be of any use to you. If you want to do a clean filtering style effect, 
or a accurate modeling of a uh, fancy DI transformer, uh, look elsewhere because I didn't call it Wolf Box because the Wolf Box is a real product by somebody else, but I called it Wolf Bot because I dialed it in, modeling it after the sounds of a actual Wolf Box that somebody had and made a YouTube video about, showing what it sounded like with just the the raw signal and what it sounded like when they ran through their fancy DI box. And these things can get expensive. You can't get those transformers anymore. But, uh, and I did not get one of those transformers. I suppose if I ever do get one, I can try for a Wolfbot 2. But for now, you get to have this. And if it is any use, I could picture, for instance, maybe you put it on like a snare or something like that. Put it on something where it's okay if it buzzes a little bit, but you want a percussive attack and a sort of mid-rangey thump. And it's going to do a kind of weird buzzy noise. And that's as intended. Like, this is not for putting clean synthesizers through and complaining because eh, it made a weird buzzing noise. Yeah, I knew. I know. It does that weird buzzing noise. But the weird buzzing noise is part of what the sound is. And there really isn't anything else doing quite that. So you could at least check it out. I'm going to continue. I have recently been recording things like Black Sabbath albums, Blue Oyster Cult, and Judas Priest for doing my measurements using meter and making my list of songs where I'm going to, this week, start putting up the... Uh, the Timeless Hit Record series where I pick stuff with the aid of patrons who can suggest things. I've only had one suggestion, though, and it was a record I did not have, so I couldn't do it. Um, and play them on my channel so you can hear what the original record sounded like because you can't hear what this stuff sounds like through Spotify or whatever because they don't have access to that. All you get is the most recent of remixes, remasterings, and ruinings. So I kind of have to show you what these things really sounded like and how they work in meter. And I'm looking forward to doing some of that. I think I'm going to start with a classic Yes song that I grew up on with the vinyl record that I grew up owning. But more on that later. Talk to you later. And I'll see some of you folks on Tuesdays and Thursdays where I have started sometimes doing mixes using meter and also using the underdevelopment version of Console X that I have going on. But that's a tale for another day. Bye-bye.